So guys, as foreigners living in China for many years and after spending a week here, what would you say are the common misunderstandings or misperceptions about Tibet? There are a huge number. Um, one problem is, there's, there's, we just talked about, there's some narrative in the press that's negative about it. There are also honest mistakes. China changes so fast that anybody write, who writes a book about China, it's wrong by the time it gets published. I mean, I keep hearing, even today, I hear people say, China's development is only in a few coastal cities and the rest of it's desperately poor. People still say that and they believe it because they read it in a book. And it may have been true 20 years ago, but now we're in one of the remote, most remote areas of China. There's a lot of development here. So things change so fast. It's such a dynamic economy that people need to realize that China's changing, China's developing. One thing I would recommend for the rest of the world is, well, at least for my own country. I, I'm an American, I love the United States. One of the reasons I, I want people to understand what's really going on in China is that the United States has wasted so many resources over the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years getting into stupid wars and, and pushing for changes in other countries that we don't understand, where we should be concentrating on our own problems. We need a lot of transformation in the United States, and we should be focusing on that. And one of the things that drives me crazy is that the United States, the median real wage, average wages of average people, have not gone up in 40 years. You've had a massive transformation of wealth going from labor to capital over the last 40 years. We need to concentrate on fixing that uh, rather than trying to somehow fix China or fix Myanmar or fix any place in the world. I think one of the biggest misconceptions people have about Tibet is that the everyday Tibetan is oppressed, that they can't practice their religion. I think we clearly saw pilgrims, you know, going to the most holy sites in Tibetan religion. And I think that there's a misconception that Tibetans aren't optimistic. I think when you talk to younger Tibetans, they clearly are optimistic and they have a can-do attitude. They have the, you know, they feel like they can realize anything. They can buy that car in the future, they can get educated, they can buy that home, they can provide for their families. You know, I interviewed that boy who's 27 years old and he goes, I want to be able to open up my own hotel in the next five, 10 years. So it's that optimism that happiness with their lives and their future is something that I think of people, and I certainly myself, didn't quite understand about Tibet until I came here in the last week. I was expecting a much more downtrodden population than what I saw. Lots of optimism here, it's great. So do you guys foresee hope that in the future more people outside China will understand what the central government and many other places across China have been doing for the Tibetans and for the region? Unfortunately, I'm pessimistic about the world. There's an overarching narrative which is going to be very hard for, for China to overcome. My recommendation for the world is calm down, don't get into any mess or don't get into any fights. And uh, if China will continue to grow over the next 20 years, if it's able to maintain peace and stability and economic reforms, and by then the world will be a different place. I think it's going to be difficult for China to overcome the false narrative that's in the Western press and in coming out of governments. Now they got to keep trying. They have to do more shows like yours to really show the real Tibet or the real China to the rest of the world. They have to and communicate in a way that Westerners understand. But I think it's going to be tough. You know, you had the Trump regime was attacking China all the time. There was a real chance for Biden to reset relations. He had a chance to come back and say, you know what, everybody calm down. We need to find win-win situations with China. But on day one, when Biden became president, you saw Tony Blinken, the Secretary of State, said, yeah, I agree, um, China's committing genocide, which is a very loaded term. You saw that Catherine Tai, the um, trade minister, or trade secretary, is saying we're gonna keep a lot of the economic sanctions on China. You know, you've seen that Huawei and a lot of the top tech companies in China are still being hampered and really hurt by the United States and their sanctions. 
We had an opportunity under Biden, and he's really disappointed me, to reset relations. But now you've got a Trump regime and maybe a Biden regime. Republicans and Democrats alike are going to have eight years, minimum, where they're going to scapegoat China for all of America's ills. And when you have that combined with the Western media creating a false narrative, it's very hard to all of a sudden turn around if you're a political leader in the U.S. and say, we need to have good relations with China. More important is I think people really don't know what life is like in China. This is a hard thing to convey to people around the world. But when I first came here, I didn't really know what it was like. I think life in China is very nice and people have good lives here. And just conveying that, what normal life is like, is something that people in the West do not understand. And shows like yours and others, it's important for people to get a, a view of how nice life can be and how optimistic people might be and how the young people, very energetic young people, many of them. And there are a lot of, a lot of people who are very admirable, you know, poor people, building businesses, changing their lives. This is an admirable lifestyle. And I don't think people in the West have any understanding of that. Now, it's going to be very hard to convey that because I've lived here for five years. I'm seeing it, but most people cannot see it at all. So if they see five minutes on the news at night that's critical of China, that's all they believe because that's all they know.